he could be the next heavyweight champion. If I was a betting man, I'd say he probably doesn't fight for a title again. Yeah. Well, you know, I think that's what fighters do. Live on the fight report. Different. It's, a t it's just a totally different world. They will promote all the fighters and they will be working together. I don't want to do it at 80% or 90%. I want to be 100, 110%. It's been an honor to have you on the show. And uh, we'll kick things off, and I'll introduce you on the show right now. We're excited to talk to UFC lightweight fighter Austin Thun Hubbard on the fight report. And make sure to check out his fight against Joe Solecki at UFC Fight Night August 22nd, ESPN+. Plus. And also, he's a former LFA, HFC, lightweight champion. He collected a couple belts along his way to UFC. And a feared Max Rushkoff by TKO in June. And 12-4. Uh, train at Elevation Fight Team. So how are you doing, Austin? I know you're excited to get back in that cage. Uh, you know, you got you got two two really solid rounds in in your previous outing. So uh, talk about that. I mean, congratulations on the win. Thank you. The game plan against uh, Max and a short notice change of opponent. How well did your execution work? Um. Yeah, it, I thought things worked out pretty well. Uh, Max was a similar stylistic type of guy to who I was going to already fight, who going to be fighting, which is who I'm fighting now, um, the upcoming this next weekend. Uh, so, you know, I was, I was pretty well prepared and, uh, you know, went out there and just tried uh, letting it go and having fun and uh, things worked out pretty well. Yeah, I mean, talk about that because seeing him communicate to his corner at the end of the second round, you know, were you reading into his body language before he quit the fight? Did you have a feeling that this is what was going to happen? And how much of an affirmation was it for you that you got him, you broke him, and that you belong in UFC? Yeah, uh, it was kind of funny because, like, at first I thought the doctor stopped it. Um, I didn't realize, like, he just didn't want to go back out. I wasn't sure really what was going on, honestly, till. Like I got done with my interviews and stuff or actually while I was doing my interviews and they're like, oh, no, he quit. He didn't want to go back out. I was like, oh, really? I like I didn't know that. Um, But I could definitely uh, see him breaking, especially in that second round, even in the first round when he he wasn't able to hold me down and he wasn't having and I kept escape, uh, escaping his uh, submissions attempts and uh, getting right back to my feet. Um, I could definitely see with every time I defended and got back up that he was, it definitely seemed to break him a little bit. And so, you know, I just kept pouring it on him on the feet and hitting the body hard and breaking him down. And um, yeah, worked out pretty well. Nice. So, you know, that reaffirms that you belong here. Uh, what was like the reaction like from Kingside? Do you have like, you know, White mentioned something to you or some of the staff like, hey man, you actually you know, broke him and, you know, he quit. Yeah. I, that? Yeah. I had actually a lot of people tell me like, I've never seen someone just straight up quit like that. You're like, you, know, you gotta be pretty proud of that. I was like, yeah, I guess. So, Oh, it is pretty cool. I guess to have someone like just straight up, not want to come back out. Uh, I would, I would say that's, that's just as cool as uh, like a, any sort of other finish, you know, to just straight break someone to the point where they don't even want to come out that third round. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And we had heard that, you know, I believe one of the matchmakers, so uh, that uh, Max's uh, manager was in his ear telling, talking about his undefeated record and, you yeah. know, kind of propping him up. So before he got that. Yeah, I was, I was even the Talk underdog about, in that you know, fight. <laughs> go ahead. I was even the underdog in that right. fight, which kind of That's crazy. blew my mind and made me mad a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, reading into the undefeated records a little too much. Yeah. Um, talk about Joe Selecki. I know he's 92. Uh, original opponent, you know, obviously refocusing on him now, picking up preparations against him, which was originally supposed to happen back in June. And he defeated Matt Wyman. So going off, did you get a chance to watch that fight? Uh, what have you read into him so far? Um, yeah, I mean, he, he definitely seems to be more of a favor towards grappling. Uh, it seems will be where he wants to fight. Um, but as far as the opponents I've already faced, uh, I don't think he's probably as skilled of a wrestler as even the last guy I fought. And 
uh, definitely not Madsen and probably not Davi either. Um, you know, he's a, he's a good fighter. He's a respectable fighter for sure in his own right. Um, but as far as the people I've faced so far in the UFC, I, I feel like I, I feel confident in this, uh, matchup that, uh, I'll be able to do what I want, uh, as far as like, you know, keeping on my feet and, you know, hopefully get a finish. I'm always trying for a finish and trying to make an exciting fight for all the fans. So, uh, you know, that's always my goal. So that's what I'm always shooting for. And hopefully that happens. And definitely, I'm sure a lot of people in New York recognize you from your last fight. They're going to want to check this one out as well. Yeah. Um, now, we had Coach Vinny Lopez on the show recently. Uh, you know, he's saying that in training, he'll have his guys go against, you know, Coach Trevor Whitman. Uh, you know, uh, Justin Gaethje obviously is his, uh, you know, his, his fighter. So talk about this, uh, the hard sparring, some of those experiences that you, you, you had. Is this, you know, is this pretty intense stuff? It sounds yeah, like. Yeah, man, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's good, friendly competition between us. You know, he, he uh, teaches me a lot. I get to learn from him. Uh, it's always a good, fun, hard round. Uh, we, I feel like we push each other pretty well. And uh, we both kind of can learn from each other a little bit and always get uh, solid work together. And uh, it's definitely a good time when uh, I get it, get to get my rounds in with him. Yeah, definitely. And is that, is that kind of like, you know, uh, simulating the fight? Because you'll have two coaches on, you know, opposing coaches on either end during these uh, training sessions somehow. So yeah, during yeah, these sparring sessions. Yeah, that that's uh, honestly, I've never really quite thought about it all that much like that. And that's a very good point. <laughs> Your teammates, of course, are on the war path as well. I know, you know, Curtis Blades uh, recently uh, reacted to Derek Lewis's win. Obviously, the Black Beast is steamrolling, so he wants a uh, part of that, you know. Um, and yeah. then we also have Drew Dober, who's waiting on his next assignment as well. So, you know, yeah. talk about your teammates, you know. Obviously, they're helping you prepare, but they're hungry to get back in there just as much as you are. Yeah, definitely. Oh, uh, Yeah, I mean... Black Beast for Curtis makes perfect sense. Uh, I think it would be a good fight. Um, I hope he gets that fight. I mean, they they both seem to agree on it. And like I said, it makes sense in the as far as like the UFC standings and what's going on in the division. So I hope that fight gets made for him. And uh, yeah, I I know Drews. He's uh, working on a fight as well. Um, you know, uh, Neil Magny's actually fighting the week after me, so he he's got a uh, stiff test in Robbie Lawler, so that'll he's super excited for that. You know, uh, we have quite a, the next like couple of weeks is all booked up for us over at Elevation Fight Team between uh, some of the female fighters we have, and then um, obviously the male fighters as well. Definitely, it's it's an exciting time to be a uh, part of your team and. Always going, I assume. You guys always have a lot of great fighters coming through yeah. there. Definitely. Uh, for yeah, for that fight with Neil uh, against Robbie, I mean that's a legend right there, and yeah, I feel like that's going to be a lot of fun to see you know Neil perform against such a great fighter like like uh, Robbie, a guy who's headlined multiple times and multiple yeah. events. How do you feel Definitely. about it? Yeah, I think he's going to do really well. Um, you know, he's he's really motivated. Uh, and when he's motivated, it doesn't seem like anyone can stop him. Uh, so I'm like, I'm excited for him. That's for sure. Yeah, definitely. And then what do you plan on doing to get the win? And, you know, obviously no fans are there at the venue. So gain everyone there on their feet. Everyone that's watching is what I mean at home. How do you plan yeah. on doing that with this fight? Uh, you know, much like my last fight, you know, I want to stuff his takedowns and piece him up on the feet and uh, make an exciting show and, uh, you know, hopefully finish him. Definitely. We were looking forward to an exciting fight, and there wasn't much uh, that time for you, I, I assume, you know, between game fighters ready, and uh, you know, did you have an inclination that the UFC would call this soon? Um, I actually got scheduled to fight in September, September 19th. And so, well, originally I, I thought I would, um, my manager told me that the UFC wanted me back in August. So I was preparing for a fight as if I was fighting in August and cutting weight and everything. And then when I did get a fight, they said it was September 19th against a different opponent. 
And then they called me like two or a week, week or two ago, I forget what exactly, saying that uh, would I take this fight on, you know, the 22nd? And I said, yeah, so here we are now. Definitely. And of course, you're probably used to all the procedures and precautions by now that the UFC is taking place. So um, you feel very safe. You feel very safe, you know, going there a second time. You're actually more comfortable knowing what yeah. to expect. Yeah, definitely. Uh, definitely feel comfortable. I feel like they do a great job of kind of isolating us off of the strip. And, uh, you know, even in the hotel, only the UFC staff and the coaching fighters are in the entire hotel. So um, I feel like they, they really got it down and I feel perfectly safe and everything else. For sure, and I, you know, obviously, it'll, it will, it will never, you know, stay like this. Yeah. You know, obviously, one, you know, one day again, you'll have the fans, you know, yeah, up to you, wine pictures, autographs, and you know, have the the reaction of the general audience. So unless yeah. you miss that, you know, we know that it's probably coming, right? Yeah, I'm sure it'll be here sooner or later. Hopefully. <laughs> well, Austin, I. Oh yes, for sure. And we appreciate you taking time to be on the fight war today. Again, best of luck. And uh, make sure everybody to check it out August 22nd, UFC Fight Night on ESPN Plus. Joe Selecki against Austin Dodd Hubbard right here talking to us on the Fight Lay Report. It's going to be an exciting fight. Make sure to stay tuned. To, you know, tune in actually. You know, for for whenever wherever it is on the card, it's going to be really exciting. We can't wait to see you uh, perform again. Of course, your teammates you. as well. Uh, have a great night. Thank and, you uh, too. Luck to you. Yep. Thank you. Have a good night. Anytime.